These 30 people have never met. By the day's end, they may wish they never had. For one long day, they'll be at the mercy of this woman, a retired American teacher who calls herself the bitch. Some would say with good reason. Bullshit! No, you're not gonna say I'm sorry there's racism. For 40 years, Jane Elliott's been running an exercise that's ignited controversy around the world. It isn't my fault you're stupid. Do I feel sorry for her? She says it lays bare the hidden truth about racism in white societies. Many disagree, some vehemently. You're doing it again. Persecuted her for standing You're out. You're doing it again. Persecuted him for standing out. The only change that ever happens is when people stand out and all of a they fall. Now she's bringing her extreme methods and message to modern Britain. She's about to divide this group. Her aim, to simulate a racist, apartheid-style regime. So watch what's about to unfold with the following two questions in mind. Will British people accept her regime or stand up to it? And does it reveal that we're all more racist than we'd like to admit? Six months ago, we advertised for people to take part in a psychological exercise. These men and women from a range of races and backgrounds have come to this disused warehouse in London to participate. They don't know what lies ahead. You people get in here and sign in, now. Jane Elliott starts by segregating the group, but she's not going to divide them according to the color of their skin. Put your name under the right eye color, brown or non-brown. Your name. Write it so I can read it. She's deliberately chosen a different physical attribute, their eye color. Did you sign in? <coughs> no, is it brown, non-brown, what? Eyes. Right. <laughs> Sit. Put your legs together. I don't have to straddle them and I don't have to stand between them. Okay. Any volunteers with blue eyes will be bullied and collared. Over there. And sent to a holding room with a security guard. For them, the regime of discrimination is already beginning. Okay, sit down. Sit. <laughs> so masterful. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to make an exception in your case. Oh dear. Keep your mouth shut. Okay. And start now. I don't play second banana. Do you understand that? And if you want to be cute, and if you want to be funny, you are in the wrong place. You got the wrong color eyes, and you got the wrong attitude. Okay. Now you're bound to find this less and less amusing as the day goes on. Save yourself. Go over there. Okay. Throughout the day, I'm based in this adjoining building, watching with psychologists Professor Dominic Abrams and Dr. Funke Bafour. So it started already, but it's quite blunt already, isn't it? I mean, uh, they look pretty shocked. And she, she's established a very clear power structure here. She is the leader, and they have to respect her authority for this to work. And at this point, they're all releasing control. What she's doing now is making them release control so that she's in charge. But the blue eyes are already compliant. Yeah, yeah. They're being shouted out, yes. told to sit down, shut up. I think they think it's a joke. They might think, oh, this is workshop. This is, this is just to set us up for the workshop, I'm not really realizing the impact it's going to have on them. Brown or non-brown? Brown. Brown. Go right down there. Brown eyed, go there. Volunteers with brown eyes are sent straight through to their seats in the main hall. This will be the privileged majority group. The blue eyes will be held together in an uncomfortable room with just four chairs. Cool, she's friendly, isn't she? Actually, she was very rude. And monitored by security cameras. What do you have in your mouth? Nothing. You aren't chewing gum? No, anymore. Don't be. Go over there and stand until somebody comes for you. Sit down. 
Now I'm going to give you a piece of advice. I don't need cute. I gave up cute when I was 18. And you better give it up now. Don't be a funny girl today. I'm not amused. I've had a bad night and you're going to have a bad day. Go over there and stand by her. Brown eyed? Brown eyed. Go right there. Thank you. Not doing too well, are we? Uh, don't walk in front of me. Go behind me and sit down. Haven't done well at all yet, have they? Yeah, we have. Oh, have we? What that's have we so done wonderful. that's so wonderful? Whoa, oh, it isn't enough. that? Yeah, what a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Go over there. Thank God. Thank you. Go there. With 15 minutes gone, all 30 volunteers are now segregated. Keep these people quiet. Keep these people orderly. If they get noisy, they will be ejected from the building. The blue-eyed group is now isolated and out of earshot. The scene is set for the next phase of Jane Elliott's regime. Her plan is to get the brown-eyed group to turn against the blue eyes. But why? What is she trying to achieve? It was the 60s when Jane Elliott devised her exercise. She was a school teacher in a small, all-white American town. America in 1968 was a segregated country. Black Americans were dying, battling for their basic civil rights. When Martin Luther King was assassinated, it had a profound effect on Jane Elliott. She was determined to find a way to show her eight-year-old pupils what was wrong with racism. You think you know how that would feel yeah. to be judged by the color of your skin? No, I don't think you would know how that felt unless you had been through it, would you? She wanted them to understand how discrimination by something as arbitrary as eye color is unfair and illogical, as it is to discriminate on the basis of skin color. Okay, how many in here have brown eyes? It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. I watched what had been marvelous, cooperative, wonderful, thoughtful children turn into nasty, vicious, discriminating little third graders. They were ghastly. In race-torn America, Jane Elliott opened her students' eyes to overt racism. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm your resident bitch for the day. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> but as she prepares to unleash the full force of her provocative methods on these men and women, what will she reveal about modern, multicultural Britain? We are going to inject live racism into these people in hopes that in the future they will decide not to let those things happen to other people. This exercise is an inoculation against racism. We can make a difference here today. When you do this exercise in a kind way, people think you're weak and they do not listen. Do I have your attention? Yeah, do I have your attention? Oh yeah, damn right. And I intend to have your attention because there's nothing polite about racism. The all-white, blue-eyed group is now isolated in a holding room. At this stage, none of the brown eyes know Jane Elliott's true intentions, to turn them into a group willing to take part in humiliating the all-white, blue eyes. The purpose of this exercise is to let these nice blue-eyed white folks find out how it feels to be something other than white in the UK for two and a half hours. They are not going to like it because I don't like them. They've already been abusive. They've already been belligerent. They've already tried to make a joke of something. Can you make a joke of racism? No, I can't. No, I didn't think so. Can you make a joke of racism? Can you make a joke of racism? Let me put it this way. You laugh and I'll change the color of your eyes so fast you won't know what hit you. You got it? 
You get angry about racism? Me? Yeah. yeah, all the time. You do, all the time. Yeah. Why? Is there something wrong with you? No. No? Is no. there something wrong with racists? Yes. Damn right. If you want to see a decrease in the level of racism in your society, the first thing you have to do is let white people find out how it feels to be on the receiving end of it. Jane Elliott's abrasive style is not to everyone's taste. Over the years, it has been criticized as bullying. How do you feel about Jane's style and approach? This is an educator, a teacher, trying to teach these people what it is like to feel discriminated against. And you think about adults being taught in that way. She's put them in a childlike position, which many people don't, well, nobody wants to experience that as an adult. So I do feel that some of her elements are quite harsh. She's taking something that's been incredibly important to her in her personal life and in her role as a teacher. And she's saying, with this, I can powerfully demonstrate to a set of people what it's like to be the victim of racism and discrimination. But brown-eyed adults are much tougher to bring into line than children, and Jane Elliott's style soon hits a nerve with some of the white volunteers. What they learn today, they will either leave in this room or take out of them this room in a very positive way. But these people are people. You're assuming now, that they're what? racist. You're assuming they've got a lesson to be learned. You know, we could be racist. Oh, why, I'm sure you are. You? No, I'm, I'm sure every person why, in every person in this room. Let they, me. T I, you didn't. Un you didn't listen to me. You're assuming I've got a racist attitude just because they're blue eyes. If you That's live in, true. if you live in the UK, you're saying, you're saying that they've got more to learn. I just think the logic's a bit faulty to try and reduce discrimination. Racism listen, Sonny. I don't care what you think. Racism. I don't care what you think. Do you understand that? But isn't it kind of contradictory? Do I give a damn? Do I care? You, you trade places with him. Right now. Why? Not because I told you to. That's the only reason you need. Go back there. Yes, sir. Mom. Well. Some of us white folks would rather not see white folks verbally, psychologically, mentally, and emotionally abused for a few minutes. Would rather not hear white folks described in an unpleasant way for a few minutes. Did you get that lesson? Did you get that message? Now, if you consider this exercise too evil yes. for you to go through it, then you need to be somewhere else. I would, I would much rather be on the blue-eyed side than the aggressor side. I don't care where you'd rather be. Now, are you going to cooperate or not? I would, I'm saying I would much rather be on I'm the receiving asking end you than if you're going aggressive. to cooperate or not. It's an exercise for them to understand this is what comes to you because of how you look. It's, it's, it's a learning process. It's an exercise that removes choice and freedom and autonomy. But you don't have a choice. I don't have a choice to be a black woman. It was assigned to me when I came into this world. You are a black female choice that I'm talking about is a choice of whether I decide to be an aggressor, to be someone who marginalizes these people. Look, wait a minute. I don't have time. I do not have time to convince this young man that what we're doing is all right. There's no way I'm going to convince him of that, and I'm not going to spend any more time on it. Get this young man out of here. Now, do any of the rest of you want to leave? Because here are your choices. You're either going to cooperate or you're going to leave. It's as simple as that. I don't have time you for this nonsense. Exercise I don't freedom, have time for this nonsense. You can marginalize yourself to that lady there. It's your choice. What do you think is the effect of her throwing him out on the rest of them? The majority of this group are committed to what she wants to do. And notably, it's the white members of the group who are uncertain about it and unhappy about and it. And now another one's walking out. People in majority positions, powerful positions, the whites, for example, don't see there's a problem with racism. Mm. And it's a really fundamental problem. They just don't see there's an issue. And this is what we're getting here as well, is that the white people in this brown eye group are kind of saying, look, do we really need to do this? Is it really necessary? And she's trying to convince them, and the rest of the group are convincing them that it is necessary. Now, if you think I'm being too harsh on her and him, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because those blue-eyed people are going to come in here and try to argue. Are you going to support them? 
Are you going to support them? Are you going to support them? You? You? Now, here's what's going to happen. All I want you to do is act white. You white folks know how to act white. You've been doing it all your lives. You know how to act white? Sure you do. You know how to act white? You know how to act white? Not really. Well, can you when you have to? Just look down your nose at everyone. Can you? Can you when you have to? Yeah, I suppose so. Do you know how to act white? Of course. Oh, sure you do. You know you do, and I know you do. With two volunteers gone, Jane Elliott seems to have quelled the brown-eyed dissent. But back in the 60s, when she divided her original school class, she was shocked by how readily the brown-eyed group took to their superiority. What happened, John? Russell called me names and I hit him. Hit him in the gut. She was even more alarmed by the blue-eyed group. They gave up. Their heads went down. They underperformed. Jane Elliott felt she had seen the world in microcosm. Her exercise showed what racism was, an immoral and irrational social construct that people were far too quick to sign up to. Since then, she's put adults all over the world through her exercise, and her approach has become more confrontational. You're either my way or the highway. Do it my way or get out of here. Out of here. What have you just learned? Now, Jane Elliott directs the full force of her confrontational tactics towards her prime targets, the blue-eyed group. Now, whether or not I like them, we're going to let these people in here. And you're going to see to it that they understand that we have created a situation for them to learn. That we did this for their own good. And how should they feel about that? Thankful. Grateful. And if they aren't grateful, what does that prove about them? They're ignorant. They're ingrates. No matter what you do for them, it isn't enough. That's just the way these people are. The Blues have now been waiting in the holding room for two hours. Time to go, then. Lovely time, too. They're about to discover what it's like to be on the receiving end of Jane Elliott's dictatorial regime. If one of these boys tries to come at me, what are you going to do? Protect you. Protect me, thank you very much. Change places with her. So what do you think is going to happen when the Blues come in now? Quick predictions. I think the Blues are going to stick together. I do agree with um, Dominic, they will stick together. I think one person will probably leave. Get in here and sit down. They look very intelligent to you. Look very in aware. Look very interested. Get up here and sit down. Get up here and sit down. Get up here. You're not sitting in the brown eyed group. Get up here and sit down. You're not sitting in the brown eyed group. Get up here and sit down. My initial reaction was we're into a them and us situation. I spotted immediately that the group of the brown-eyed people were looking very aggressively at us, they were looking very negatively at us, and I knew immediately that we were in for it. Get up here and sit down. You're not sitting in the brown-eyed group. Get up here and sit down. Now, if you'll look behind you, you'll see that most of these chairs... <clears throat> Don't move for her. <coughs> Get out of there. Jane Elliott now begins to make life very difficult for the Blues. Do you have a physical problem that will be made worse by sitting on the floor for an extended period of time? Possibly, but I think I'll be okay. Possibly, but she thinks she'll be okay. If we find out later that she isn't okay, who's she going to blame it on? Us. Us. So am I going to take that answer? No. No. Do you or do you not? I do. Was she lying before? Yeah. Yes. Yes, she said possibly, but I think it'll be okay. Did she lie to us? Yes. What do you know about blue-eyed people? Liars. <laughs> <laughs> you find that amusing. Don't laugh at her. She makes you look real bad. The Blues will be put through a series of classroom exercises, basic, even childlike in their simplicity. Jane Elliott has used these over the years with dramatic effect. Oh! 
<laughs> Her mission is to grind down the blue eyes. You know what a redundancy is? Mm. What? They give you money and you leave your job. <laughs> they give you money and you leave the job. Once they're feeling downtrodden, what they learn from this can be a real revelation. Who's responsible for you being on the hot seat right now? I am. Um... Thank you very much. Now, does that teach you something? That I have to listen to you. Is that all? And I have to conform to the way you want me to be and not how I am. Yeah. Does that teach you something? Yeah. yeah. That I'm insignificant. Yeah. Does that teach you something? Yeah. Yeah. What does that teach I'm you? I'm worthless. What does that teach you? If I can make you, if I can convince you that you're worthless in 45 minutes, what could I do if I did with this with you for 30 years? You could take away my self-being and who I am. But in Britain in 2009, the blues start to fight back. Getting right along. You do understand, you understand then that you are being you understand that you are being discriminated against. Yes. Do you understand that you're being discriminated against? Discrimination, downright. Do you are? Do you understand that you aren't liking what you're having? You need to know that that's not important to me. What's important to me is every time you argue, you prove that what I said about you is true. That you're argumentative. That you're belligerent that you're uncooperative, that you're uncivilized, that you don't follow the rules, that you want to have things your own way, that you are accustomed to using power, and that you don't understand. Do you understand what's going on here? Yes. Tell them what's going on here. And the tall white male. Basically, it's a lot of people are totally unaware that hmm? discrimination goes on as much as it does. Okay, what, I want to know what happens when it happens. When, when it happened to you the last time, what wait, happened? Wait, 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 no, wait, no, wait. No, 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 no. You don't have to answer that question. Yes, you do. Say what you no, want to say. You don't no, have no, to no, answer that question. Say what you want to say. What say, what say. Because because when it happens no, out there in the real world, people make a stand. Question. It's against the law and people make a stand. Don't now I'm making a stand. Enough. And guess how much attention I'm going to pay to that. You have a free choice. You have a free choice. No. Who wants to listen to David speak? Don't listen to her. Speak. She is not running this up. show. Take, her out, of Take her out of here. Take her out of here. Fine. Don't listen to her. I, I understand what you're doing. I'm just saying I don't understand why. I've spent the morning with these people and none of them are racists. Just because my, my skin isn't black. I mean, I'm, I'm you probably noticed, a little bit tubby. I've been no. discriminated. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I've been discriminated about with that all my life. I still put up with it. Yeah. I face it. I go into shops and see a nice shirt. Oh dear, they don't do my size. Oh well, I'll have to put up with it, won't I? You can use your lose your tubby. Mm. I can't, but you can't. You change can't, your color. You can't change the color of your skin. Unfortunately, there's a small minority that will use the word racism. They bandy it around when it's not. Let's use the word political correctness. It's, it's, You're not use, allowed to use the word gollywog anymore. See, I don't, I, I don't to me, it's not offensive to you. Political I don't fuck bar bar black chip. What's that about? Political What's strange is that you've got the blue-eyed people actually sort of arguing that racism isn't a problem. Yeah, the blue-eyed people are defending the system. They're saying, you know, we all have to suffer. It's difficult for all of us. You know, the guy's saying, well, I can't get the right size shirts. <laughs> You know, this kind of thing. And they're, they're not, still not recognising the difference in the scale mm. of what's being experienced by minority groups as opposed to what most uh, people in yeah. society are putting up with, which are minor inconveniences by comparison. So I'm sensing, do people really understand what is racism? The group of the blue eyes are white people. They're living in their world. So we're asking them to live in a world of what it's like to be black or Asian, which is quite difficult to do in two hours. So in their minds, it's like, well, racism doesn't exist because it doesn't exist to them. Jane Elliott has carried out her controversial exercise all over the world. But here in Britain, she's met stubborn resistance. I'm not going with all this crack you're putting out. I'm sorry. That's up to you. When I came here, racism, oppression was wrong. When I leave here, I will still think that. In the blue-eyed group, the all-white volunteers are refusing to accept the exercise has anything to teach them. While the majority brown-eyed group are watching on reluctant to speak out. Do you think this is going to plan? 
Is this how it's supposed to be? I don't think it's going quite according to plan in the sense that usually by this point you'd mm. expect the blue eyes to be more crestfallen and you might expect the brown eyes to be getting more energised about criticising them. The browns aren't joining in a lot though, are they? No. And I think that probably represents which country you're doing this exercise in. Whereas America, there is a strong divide, or Australia or South Africa. And this country, is, it's more subtle. So even though they may have an opinion, they're sort of keeping it quiet to themselves. Do you get angry about racism? No. You don't? No. I was brought up by my mum, who's white, grandma, who's white, my auntie, who's white, my cousin, who's white. I mean, my family is white. So the only thing that isn't white is my appearance in terms of my mannerisms and, and everything else. So I, I play the game. And part of my playing the game is avoiding the situations where somebody could have a negative stereotype of me based on my name, what I look like. And I think that's it, because once somebody sits down and have a conversation with me, they realise I'm, I'm not the things that potentially their stereotypes would dictate I should be like. Jane Elliott now introduces a setup designed to force any reluctant volunteers to finally step into the fray. You. Stand up here beside me. Uh, yeah. You, 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 right here. <coughs> I wanted you, nice blue-eyed white people, to find out how it feels to be on the receiving end of that which we allow to be handed out to whole groups of people every day. You don't live what she lives with. And you can't argue with somebody's experience. No, no, no. If you don't, if you don't see the other person's reality, then and you don't face that, reality, you don't face that reality, you're almost part of the problem because you don't see any reason for change. It change what? And change what? In the UK, the racism it's very subtle. It's very subtle. It's it's standing in a queue, waiting to be served, and the lady at the desk or the reception serves the person behind you or the person the white family that's just walked in through the door or or my son running for the bus and getting stopped by the police why are you running i'm running for the bus her child learned something like this every time he walks down the goddamn street stop and search Hell, and in the, like in yeah, the United, United States, States of America. Any kid stop and search because there's a knife problem at the You're moment. eight times any more child. likely to be stopped and searched as a black boy. But you keep saying statistics. I'm sorry. It's, it's, statistics that's how it is. It's so it is. Everywhere, all teenagers out at the night. It's a statistics if they're pissed, show. The police will stop them and look for knives. It doesn't matter what color they're You are eight times more is. likely to be well, stopped and searched. One of my favorite friends is the local Bobby or You're not hearing me. I am hearing you, but... You feel you're And now unique. you're getting defensive. You are not unique. You're not, you're still not, you're still not hearing the point. You're not I'm hearing totally the point. I'm totally hearing the point. What I'd like to hear more is what you propose to do to actually change all this. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get on oh, to that later. Oh, How are we going to change oh, it? Oh, good. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that. And I'm bored with this what, bit now. I'm ready for a tea break. What, what, you're, doing, you what you're doing is blaming the victim. Sorry. What victim? What you're doing is blaming the victim. You're victim, saying, you're saying to her, uh -huh. what are you going what to do to change this? What are you going to do? She doesn't no, have the power said, to change this. We no, no, you did not. Did. No, what I'm did sorry, she say? You weren't listening. What's actually going on here? This is a lot what happens in society, where people are just in so much denial that they feel, well, you sort it out, it's your problem, when it's actually all of our problem. I think the people who are actually learning a lot here is the people in the brown group, because they're learning about how impenetrable this is yeah. for white people, for majority of people, that they cannot get it, they cannot get this difference of perspective. It's really tough for them. They either don't want to accept there is discrimination, or they don't see the discrimination, or they don't understand what it is when they do see it. As the disagreement escalates, one of the more cautious volunteers finally steps forward. I don't think we are in denial. I think you want us desperately to be in denial. Stump. I have a daughter that lives not with me, obviously, but she lives in a very middle class area, a very rural area, 
and she is the only non-white in her school. I will not go and pick her up from school because of my belief of other parents' perceptions of my daughter because her father looks like I do. Now, you can frown as if to say, well, why, why, why? But the bottom line is, after 34 years of my life in this country, that's how I feel. Oh, that's so sad. It is so... It is so sad. Yeah? I feel sad. Okay, now, now, yeah. now another reality of it, yeah. and ask any of my friends, is I talk in terms of I play the game. Okay? If you speak to me on the phone, you will have you zero know. idea of what I look like. You either conform, mm -hmm. in which case you get an easy life. Or you fight against it, and you'll end up criminalised, outcast, and removed from the situation. But Marvin, what you've said, I agree with, but it's not colour. You could be a skinhead and not want to pick your kid up from school. No, no, you no, can, no, but, you but, can but, be a cockney. So, 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 the, the, skin the skinhead can let his hair grow. That's right. I'm, I'm talking change. wholly and exclusively based on the colour of my skin. Nothing else. Just, just to qualify the thing about the school, part of the reason I don't go to, school, to the school is because, I mean, I'm mixed race, so I'm only half caste. My daughter is a, has got a white mother, which means she's even lighter than me. Therefore, I believe that most, if not all, of the people at that school think she's white. If I turn up, Shock. Yeah. Yeah, then the children will see a different... And treat her differently. Be and, and, Possibly. and again, it's, Possibly. It's, it's, it's not necessarily because these kids are, are ignorant, it's because these kids live in an environment that's wholly of white people. I chose to play the game. That's right. That's it. We have to play the game. Can, there is this game we have point, to play white to get by. We have to play the game as well. My ex husband, for example, is in the sporting environment. He's taking on top quality customers, the RAF, people like that. But he conforms. He has to wear a business suit. He has to wear a tie. He has to speak beautifully. He has his short back and side hair cut. He looks immaculately groomed. He's actually a rugby player from way back. He's happy wearing sloppy old jumpers. Is he, white? he used to have his hair longer. Is he white? We have to conform as well. Is he white? That's not so, conforming. So, ta you're talking about conforming. I'm he would about, conform I'm, I'm to pick up to, my talking... daughter from her school. He would not turn up looking like a scruff bag with long hair, bad clothes, bad breath, unwashed, yeah, bad pride. shoes. Isn't that pride, though? No, no, no. It's exactly the same. You're talking about your school environment with your daughter, Isn't my it? school environment with my daughter. We all daughter. agree that it's not the same. They would it's both not the still same. It's not the same. But, but it is. Sorry. Yes, yes. Maybe yes. to a yeah. let's, let's agree. And let's, a, a uh -oh. let's agree to disagree. But there was the assumption that racism is only particular for people who are black. And I don't actually agree with that. I think there's racism for white people just as much. I've been in a situation many times where I've had remarks made about my person, the fact that I'm white, that I'm blonde, that I'm getting old or whatever. Um, I've come across just as much discrimination in my life as possibly many black people have. It's interesting now that the brown eye group are actually talking up. You know, the blue eyes were obviously saying, this is where I stand, I don't agree with this. And the brown eyes say, no, listen, these are the experiences that we have had and making relation to what people are actually saying in the blue eyes so, group. So what do you think this tells us then about discrimination in Britain? In Britain, you've got an establishment with power. And that establishment, the people who are part of it, the rules, the laws that we have, are things that people take for granted as being fair. But they privilege a certain set of people more than everybody else. So it's not that we have one particular racial group that everybody's racist against. It's that there are many minority groups, all of which are disadvantaged by this system of power. But you might walk away from this and say the white, the white people in the blue-eyed group are just in denial. I, I totally agree, because there's a sense of, like, well, we're not racist, and racism doesn't happen. Because the discourse now is that people are feeling, whether you're black, white, Asian, everyone feels they're being discriminated against. But what people are failing to recognise is the issue of power. And this is what Jane is trying to present, but they're not actually quite getting that right now. But Jane Elliott is undeterred, and the segregation of the two groups continues during the food break. 
As the Blues are kept together and fed basic sandwiches, the Browns are given the freedom to enjoy a buffet. And look what they're getting. Have you looked? They're getting called on blur. We get a few sarnies. This is where it takes the piss, actually. It's not just the Blues who are feeling hard done by. Over in the brown-eyed group, the black volunteers feel there is a lesson to be learned. But one of the white volunteers doesn't think it's fair to label all whites as racist. If I'm getting drawn into something that I don't want to argue about because I don't want to see other people abused. But the thing you is, are saying that just because aware. you are black, only black people experience racism. I grew up in a country full of people where there weren't any white people. I understand racism just like you understand racism. I don't have to be black to understand what it feels like to be a black person. You don't have to be white to... You can still empathise with people. In, and when now, we first started, most of the people... Yeah. In, the, in the, the, the blues, we're in complete denial. denial. And now? And then some shifted, and some Everyone, are still in the, And then some are still, some are like this. Got, some, some, some have gotten up and walked out because they refuse to walk in our shoes which for means, two hours. Which means being picked oh, on, it's being bullied. Like, you keep a being a different... And you're closing yourself up to <laughs> Oh, well, that's rubbish. That's absolutely rubbish. Now, it just means it affects you. Here's the way it is. The exercise is not over. Do you understand that? Because the blue-eyed people don't. <laughs> <laughs> so there is more abuse to come if that's what you prefer to call it. <laughs> so, I just say where you go. She wanted, she wanted people to understand what black people were going through, but she didn't want to understand what anybody else was going through. I, you know, I hate people putting other people down it's wrong and i don't like it you know it doesn't it it's not about being black or white to me and i think it was a bigger issue it wasn't just about she made it too simple she was separating us there were black people and there were white people and that was as far as she concerned that's all it was jane elliott's beliefs and methods have always been controversial is this bullying or is her unpopular approach revealing there is more racism beneath the surface than we think? Once you start thinking, oh, everybody's looking at me, I'm different. Everybody's, everybody's got it in now, are they? Nearly as many of them as us, so they're not different. Nobody, we know. But in my class, one third of my class are black children. Then I've got a bunch of half-caste children. I've got one little girl who's stunningly beautiful. She fell over, scraped all her face. I admit I was slightly surprised that where she scraped all her face, it's all pink underneath. Right? Did I expect it to be black? I don't know. So what you're saying is that everything that people of color say to you isn't true. It's their imagination. They're paranoid. They aren't paranoid. They know what's happening to them. Throughout the day, Jane Elliott has divided the group by eye color. But a bigger division has emerged between the white and black volunteers over what racism is. Do you think this whole exercise is able to deal with the subtleties of racism in 2009? The, the racism that isn't in your face, that's under the surface, that you may not spot, you may not notice? No, that's the point isn't to be subtle. The point is to be brutal and show the brutality of discrimination as it happens, not individual to individual, but system to person. So how people suffer as a result of an unfair system. For Jane Elliott's final flourish, everyone will sit an intelligence test. But she's rigged it, so the blue eyes will fail. Brown-eyed people, move your, move your chairs back away from these people because if they can see your papers, they'll cheat. To guarantee this, she's already given the Browns half the answers and told them to keep it quiet. For the first time, the Blues offer no resistance. Hopefully it makes them aware. There's no way to win. They're in a lose-lose situation. 
and they eventually they become resigned to the fact that they have no power and it's just might as well sit here and take it there's nothing i can do about it but one white volunteer in the brown eyes is about to derail the test whose test is this hazel hazel's where's your test underneath are you checking it at the same time no why not because why should i why do i have to what's the relevance let me make it relevant for you this broad doesn't think she has to check her test we've cheated on the test so i don't see why we should be marking it well you gave us the answers you didn't cheat so... on the test so why should i mark it when i know wait, that you've cheated wait just a damn minute you can, as a white woman, prevent white people from learning for as long as you think you can get away with it. Has that fool learned anything yet? She's preventing other people from learning. She's well. working hard at it, isn't she? Yeah. With the final task thrown off course, the division between white and black surfaces once again. Here was an opportunity to carry out an exercise mm -hmm. and see how people reacted and learned from that. Mm -hmm. But instead, what we got was um, sabotage. Sabotage. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Of sabotage. the situation. Oh, it's, it's, it's not. Exactly it, it, it was clearly. I think, yeah, exactly I think we exactly all understand that this is an exercise. That's exactly and there were what it is. That's issues. Exactly. Now we will never know, will we? This controlled environment is about racism or is about being an underdog because of something you had no control over. Sometimes the, the system is stacked against you and those in power may be uh, operating in a way to put you in a disadvantaged position. Jane Elliott brings her exercise to a close. After 10 hours of struggle, has the exercise revealed the reality of life in modern Britain is still very different for white and black people. I'm 63 years old and I've seen England change so much. And um, you know, for me it's so difficult because all of a sudden, you know, we've got this multiracial society. It wasn't there when I was a kid, when I was a teenager even. And my kids accept it. They're amazing. I'm the one that genuinely has a great difficulty with it, but I'm learning. And today, I think I've learned so much. Thank you. For me, I didn't need to ever change my opinions. I walked in there as a person who feels very, very strongly about any form whatsoever of that kind of behaviour demonstrated by whether it's one of my friends, one of the children in my class, whatever. I've always felt passionately about that. So I didn't need converting. And to be treated as if I was this pariah who was out there was unacceptable anyway. So I wouldn't pay lip service to her. And my comments at the end were more how disappointed I was. I've been in occasions where people have, have you know, told a joke and everybody has laughed and nobody realized that that was a racist comment apart from me. So, you know, so you can be in a situation where, you know, whew, you know, <laughs> you know it, it goes completely over your head because it doesn't, it doesn't affect you. So because it doesn't affect you, it doesn't exist. And that's not the case. It, you've just not noticed. Jane Elliott has said this will be the last time she does her exercise on this scale. Having watched the twists and turns all day, I wanted to question her methods and beliefs. Jane, thank you very much indeed for putting this exercise on and for letting us watch. Um, but there are a number of things that have sprung to mind uh, watching it. D do you feel guilty about being white? Not at all. I didn't choose it. I can't lose it. Why would I feel guilty about it? Do you think there are things white people should feel guilty about? All white people should feel guilty about? Behaviors. White behaviors. Yes. But I don't think you, you do those things because you're white. I think you do those things because you're ignorant. 
So you're conditioned to do these things, Absolutely. to be racist. Absolutely. Do and you it think, works. The conditioning is working. has worked for a very long time. Do you think all white people are racist? I think if you graduated from high school and you aren't a racist, you weren't listening, you should have gotten an F in social studies. So that's a yes. All, that's all, a, all, all white people are racist. We are conditioned to the myth of white superiority from the moment of our, in fact, before birth. We are conditioned to the myth of white superiority. Some people who watched these events today will, they'll have this interpretation of it, and, and just, just bear me out on it, that you met these people, you brutalized them to some extent, you, you, you were very hard on them, you made them insecure, you made them question all sorts of things about themselves. Did you ever see a lynching? Obviously not. Of course you did. Would you like to? Let's, let, let, let's stick with the tradition of me asking the questions. No, um, no. Let's, let's stick with this. What I do looks brutal to white people because that isn't something they have to live with all day, every day. But you know the accusation. The accusation is you're manipulating them. Of course and, I am. And that's wrong. You're well, playing with their feelings. Yes, and it's wrong when it's done on a, a, on a grand scale in society. It's even more wrong. But we do it all the time. You've been doing this for more than four decades. Yeah. What, what do you think people are going to say the legacy of Jane Elliott is? Don't care. You must care. You've, Don't you, care. You've been doing this to change behavior and make the world a better place. You must care. Don't care. What people say about me is of little importance to me. Did I make a difference today? Did I make a difference today? Did I make a positive difference today in the area of racism? And that's what I want to do. Explore the themes raised by this or any of the programs featured in Race Science's last taboo season by visiting channel4.com slash race and science. More from the season on Sunday with science's dirty secret, charting the rise and fall of the human zoos, Sunday at 7 on 4.